This has been the Nissan pregame rush. What a pregame it's been. Dave Fleming, Greg McElroy, Laura Rutledge. Thanks for spending part of your holiday with us. Nighttime in the SEC. Bulldogs won the toss. They defer. A Logan Cook is going to kick off Jalen Jones. Very dangerous return man standing deep. And he is not going to have a returnable kick that goes out of the end zone for a touchback. And the Ole Miss offense will take the field for the first time. This is the final game of the year. The self-imposed postseason ban this year for the Rebels with everything that's gone on. This is their bowl game and they treated it like that this week. They did and they've really approached every game this regular season as though it was their final shot. But obviously this is the exclamation point knowing how last season went. Matt Luke the interim head coach said they're going to leave no stone unturned in preparation and try to pour it all out tonight here on the field. Shea Patterson the starting quarterback at the beginning of the year very talented kid out for the year. Jordan Ta'amu the junior. will get his fifth start. Full start. 79 offense. Five yard penalty. First down. And that one called on Patterson. We'll see how the communication goes. This is the first Egg Bowl experience for this young, very talented quarterback for Ole Miss. He's a gifted thrower and has handled a difficult situation with tremendous poise. Jordan Wilkins, the starting tailback, he's been playing well for Ole Miss. Their offense has been functional here. They're going to throw it on first down, going deep down the field. It is knocked away. Intended for DeMarcus Lodge. If that gives you any indication of what Ole Miss is trying to do tonight. They want to throw the ball down the field. This is an explosive offense with as good a wide receiver group as you'll see across the country trying to hit Lodge deep to take the top off early. Now let's repeat that. Arguably the most talented group of wide receivers in college football on this Ole Miss team. Another pass play to Abu right across the middle on a perfect delivery. Brown. Pass midfield well into Bulldogs territory cuts it back and a huge gain for the Starkville native. Great throw by Tamu. A.J. Brown one of the most explosive receivers in the SEC isolated on the post route off play action and him in space is bad news for the Bulldogs. Maybe the best wide receiver in the SEC. There are a lot of good ones. Here's Wilkins up the middle, and that's going to be an Ole Miss touchdown. What a start for the visitors. 58 on the pass play, 22 on the ground. If you had any questions about a team without much to play for you could argue without anything other than pride to play for. I would think that first drive might answer those questions. Ole Miss has come to play tonight. Took him 39 seconds. Extra point is up and good. Matt Luke told us his team would be ready to go. His team would play their hearts out. Man, did they get off to a start or what? Tamu throwing an absolute dime on the wrap post to A.J. Brown, beating J.T. Gray, who was trying to wall up the field. And then look at the cutback by Wilkins, trying to press it to the play side. He sees some green grass off to his right. He's done this time and time again. He's really gotten better as the season's gone on. Finding some of those vacancies up front. He hits that cutback lane and nobody was home for Mississippi State. What a start for the Rebels. Forcing these Bulldog fans to sit on their hands for a few minutes. All right, A.J. Brown, how fitting that it was he who made that big play in the first drive because he has become such a big part and interesting part of this rivalry grew up here in Starkville and after he committed to Ole Miss said well you know Dan Mullen at Mississippi State they really didn't recruit me that hard so that's why I went up north to Oxford that rubbed a lot of people around here the wrong way of course he's turned into a superstar player and he is a game captain a non senior game captain for this egg bowl kickoff from Ole Miss and here come the Bulldogs they will take the field 
for the first time and their quarterback we talked about him right out of the shoot Nick Fitzgerald who has become such a weapon he was born in Germany his dad was serving in the Air Force there grew up though mostly in the state of Georgia and an uncle who played for Georgia really loved the Bulldogs those Bulldogs wanted Georgia to recruit him as a quarterback they didn't almost nobody did he comes here to start well he has been a record setter for Mississippi State and Dan Mullen and you talked about the evolution of his game. He's always been a talented runner. The passing game has come along. It really has. And knowing the injuries they've had at wide receiver, he's really had to shoulder the load. And he has the Bulldogs in a great spot to potentially win their ninth game of the season. Egg Bowl last year against Ole Miss. An all-time single game Mississippi State rushing record. He was fabulous. He'll keep it on the first play from scrimmage tonight and get a nice game close to a first down. He got about eight. Ninth year here at Starkville, Dan Mullen, who has climbed the list in terms of all-time wins, the record books. This is the best stretch of football in the history of this program. One of the best coaches, I think you can't argue it, in the country. It's amazing what he's been able to build. A program with minimal tradition. He has certainly done a tremendous job identifying talent. Fitzgerald hands off Harris Williams, bounces off one would-be tackler and gets a Mississippi State first down. Talking about identifying talent, so much of this offense is forced onto the quarterback's shoulders. Of course, he had Dak Prescott. No one recruited Dak. No one recruited Nick Fitzgerald. Only two scholarship offers coming out of high school. But look at the players that they've developed into. I think there are very few coaches who know exactly what they're looking for the way that Dan Mullen does. Fitzgerald throws and short hops that one incomplete. Intended for Reggie Todd. His throwing has gotten better. One question for tonight's game. The wide receivers are so decimated by injury for Mississippi State. A lot of the best targets are not playing or not fully healthy. And knowing how last year's game went, you know that Ole Miss is going to sell out against the run. They're going to have eight, seven guys in the box all the time. So he's going to have to make some throws in tight coverage because these receivers might not be able to consistently separate. Will be a huge question. Even loading the box, can Ole Miss somehow slow down this running attack? Going to throw on second down. The pressure came. That one was delivered nicely for a first down. And that's the big target, Jordan Thomas. These are the windows that Nick Fitzgerald's going to have to consistently hit. Finding big Jordan Thomas, 280-pound target against tight coverage, man to man. You saw Fitzgerald talking to the official down there, maybe arguing that that could have been called as a targeting play. Fitzgerald across midfield. They're trying to affect the quarterback, and the quickest way to affect the quarterback is to hit him. Hey, he's talking right away, isn't he? Yeah, you can see Breland Speaks come in. Fitzgerald saying he hit me in the helmet. I don't think that was targeting. That was not forcible contact to the head or neck area. Keep an eye on that because we know the feelings on both sides coming into this Egg Bowl game. Second and five. Fitzgerald hands off. Williams finds a hole. Williams first down and more inside the 40. Mississippi State's never had two 1,000 yard rushers in the same season. I think tonight we'll see that happen. Both Williams and Fitzgerald are very close. And yeah, they're knocking on the door. Fitzgerald could become the SEC leader in rushing yards in a, in a season. If he goes over 98 yards today, he will pass Cam Newton what he accomplished in 2010. Yeah, no quarterback has ever run for as many as Cam. Fitzgerald's got a chance to surpass that. That throw into coverage. Incomplete. Intended for Jamal Couch. It is interesting. Mississippi State's trying to be balanced on offense on this first drive after Ole Miss went down the field so quickly and got the first touchdown of this game. And they're going to have to be methodical, try to establish the ground attack. But as you can see, Ole Miss wants to play man to man and really challenge these wide receivers on the perimeter. On the shotgun, Fitzgerald throwing again. Williams could not handle it. Incomplete. Now 
Mississippi State is one of the better third down teams in the country converting 47 percent. Of course that's in the top eight but they avoid situations like this third and long. This could be too, knowing the area of the field it could be four down territory so you might not have to get it all right here. Third and ten Ole Miss showing some pressure we'll see if they bring pressure. Now looking like they're backing off and they do just a three man rush. Fitzgerald down the right sideline it is intercepted. And the return out across the 20 from Miles Hartsfield. Ole Miss comes up with a turnover. Mississippi State Fitzgerald still maybe showing some effects of that hit earlier in the drive give up the touchdown and now the first time they have it they turn it over. Well, Miles Hartsfield comes up with the ball what a great start on the road for Ole Miss the 114th Egg Bowl on Thanksgiving. We've already seen Ole Miss stretch the field successfully in this game and A.J. Brown talking to his quarterback Jordan Tomu saying hey keep throwing it our way we're going to be able consistently get open he said they can't cover us also I'm told that Matt Luke's pregame speech was incredible his final line being go out there and play like this is a night you'll never forget I think A.J. Brown is planning on doing just that now movement along the line that's happened for the second time Ball already start, 74 offense Five penalty first down a guy who has as much of a connection to this program as anybody Matt Luke whose family was a big part of Ole Miss football history played for Ole Miss has coached now with the Rebels for 10 years the interim head coach on first down a handoff and not as much running room this time for Jordan Wilkins I know this game's big for the players but this game is massive for interim head coach Matt Luke he's going to be interviewing for the head coaching job over the next few days and having a tremendous performance tonight would go a long way to convincing Ross Bjork the athletic director to remove that interim tag. Follow on second and 11 with plenty of time to throw now finally being pressured he throws it away. Well, gentlemen you were speaking about the athletic director at Ole Miss. Who's got a big decision to make? Huge decision. And it's difficult to make that decision knowing that there's still questions about the future for Ole Miss. Will there be more sanctions? Matt Luke, though, they've done a pretty good job this year under the circumstances. Third and 11 to Amu with some pressure coming. Throws, and that one into coverage is completed. But the tackle will be made against A.J. Brown short of the first down mark. That should force an Ole Miss punt. Dangerous throw. He got it there. They'll punt the ball away anyway. That was a heck of a catch. That could have very easily been intercepted and gone the other way. Good job by Brown coming back to the football. And a good job by Mississippi State's defense getting a big stop after a bad first drive. Now Gabe Miles is back. Finally healthy. He's been banged up a lot. That uh, rugby style punt, fair catch made around the 21 yard line. So the Bulldogs get the ball back for Egg Bowl on Thanksgiving night right after this. And yeah, Mississippi State has had some great quarterback performances of late in this Egg Bowl. Dak Prescott, they figured, would be impossible to replace. And it was not a smooth, easy transition for this kid, but man, has he done a great job this year. Nick Fitzgerald, he and the Bulldogs, trailing 7 0. Williams gets the carry on first down, out to the 25. Reference. Nick Fitzgerald and his development I really believe that the best is yet to come for this young man if he can just start to make a little more consistent decision making and be more consistent with the football and the ball placement then he can be an elite player 
at any level, no denying that. But we remember Dak Prescott, he made a huge jump as a passer from junior to senior. I imagine that's the jump that Fitzgerald's wanting to make as well. Second and seven, Fitzgerald keeps it and gets a big hit. Game two, maybe three yards. Breland speaks, and Fitzgerald is hurting. Oh, boy. Oh, man. We don't want to see that. That was ugly and is ugly, and that's the reaction. Oh, man. Oh. Man, that was difficult to watch. I imagine you've already seen enough. And even with all the antagonism on both sides, the Ole Miss players showing some real sportsmanship. A great player. And a great part of this Egg Bowl tradition. Nick Fitzgerald's season is going to come to an end here tonight on this field. And just breaks your heart. For that young man. What a year he's had. Now the two head coaches. From silent to support. For a kid that they love around here. And you can only imagine what's going through Nick Fitzgerald's head. Had maybe the greatest single Egg Bowl performance in the history of this rivalry last year.
Well, I'm sure they'll get him back in the facility, get him x rayed, try to figure out exactly what. We have a pretty good idea of what happened. And now the true freshman from New Orleans, Louisiana. Welcome to the Egg Bowl, Keaton Thompson. Louisiana High School Player of the Year last year. He has a little, not much, a little playing experience this season. He is a talented runner. He'll hand off to Williams on third down. He will not get there. Now penalty flags thrown. In fact, three of them thrown at the end of that play. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 51, offense. Penalty's 15 yards, third down. Not excusing it from Stuart Reese, but you can understand how these Mississippi State players might be just totally stunned. They are definitely feeling the emotion of what just transpired with their quarterback, Nick Fitzgerald. The young freshman, Stuart Reese, the right tackle, giving a shove after the whistle. Good call by the officials, but it really sets Ole Miss up with tremendous field position here, potentially. From near the goal line, Logan Cook will punt the ball to Ole Miss. It is certainly not the way we wanted it to happen, but if you needed some perspective on what was important in this rivalry between two proud programs, that's a fair catch at the 39. I think we have that perspective now. Still the first quarter. Yeah, you just feel for that guy who is one of the great players in college football. 7 0 Ole Miss. Well, to say this Egg Bowl has changed in the first quarter is an understatement, and we're thinking about Nick Fitzgerald, just an awful injury. Now, we still got almost a full game to play. Ole Miss with the 7 0 lead. Jordan Ta'amu, the quarterback, back on the field for the Rebels. They start at their own 40 and hand it off. Wilkins squirts through. And gets five yards on first down. Wilkins going to be a big part of what Ole Miss tries to do offensively tonight. Now, they're a team that wants to air it out. No denying that. they got to keep the defense honest with those body blows on the ground between the tackles. They'll get the ball again. Kind of stumbled there and took a big hit, got a yard or so. Harold Thompson, who's filling in at middle linebacker for the senior captain, Des Harris, who misses his senior night game, made the tackle. I think the fans here are going to have to play a big role for the Bulldogs, kind of pull them along. After what we saw with Fitzgerald, pressure comes, picked up, and Brown with another catch, turned up field, first down, and still going inside the 30, shoved out of bounds rather forcefully. There is a penalty flag back behind the 35 yard line. 28 yards, depending on the call. Holding. Number one, offense. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. Leaves the ball beyond the line of the game, so it's a first down. So it is a first down, but it costs Ole Miss some field position. I think that Mississippi State is going to have to make some adjustments quickly by how they cover A.J. Brown. Already three receptions for 80-plus yards, a couple big plays, one catch and run right there. They're going to have to figure out a way to disrupt his release of the line of scrimmage and also keep a player deep on top of him because they've had no answer for number one wear in white tonight. Fitzgerald had the record setting egg bowl last year. Doesn't it feel like a night where number one this year could be setting some records? Play fake. Ta'amu pressured and gets hit. Stayed on his feet for an extra second, but that's all. First sack. This is an aggressive group on defense. You see him bring pressure off the right hand side. Harold Thompson, number 40, adding onto that pressure. When Ole Miss had additional guys in protection, they had some opportunities one on one down the field, but Talmud, not enough time to locate an open receiver. A loss of nine, it's second and long. 
Fahamu steps up in the pocket. Now throws. That catch short of midfield by DK Metcalf. Third down. Keep an eye on A.J. Brown right here. He's been the go-to guy early in this game. They've featured him to this point. Right now he's lined up as the number three trips into the boundary. You can see him right there inside Dawson Knox, who's in the slot. Third and 14. Kamu. Deep down the middle, it is incomplete, knocked away. They tried to get it to Knox. No penalty flags. There was some contact downfield. I think Mississippi State might have gotten away with one. You can see clearly JT Gray arriving early on the slightly underthrown deep ball. Kind of a bang bang play, so I understand why the officials kept the flag in their pocket. But man, I could have seen it going the other way as well. This punt trying to pin the Bulldogs deep. Fair catch at around the 11 yard line. That's where Mississippi State takes over. Time to look at our historic rivalry matchup brought to you by Wendy's. This is the 114th meeting between these two teams. 22nd time they played on Thanksgiving Day. They're going to do that again next year. When they met back in 1901, it was the red and blue against the Aggies. So, yeah, a lot has changed. The Golden Egg Trophy, it hasn't been more than, what, three decades that they've actually called this the Egg Bowl. The Golden Egg Trophy's been around for a long time. They sort of nicknamed the game, the rivalry game. And no matchup in the history, 114 years, has had the same kind of buildup as this one with all the off the field stuff. A lot of those feelings now may have changed with the injury to Fitzgerald. We'll see. Thompson, the true freshman, he can run. And Thompson all the way outside the 40. Thirty-two yards. A great run by Thompson. Bursting upfield. Nick Fitzgerald would be proud of that explosive run by the quarterback. Thompson, the running pass to the left side with some blockers out in front. Good play design for a nice gain on first down. Let's go down the floor. Guys, Nick Fitzgerald is getting x-rays right now. His mom, Annetta, and dad, Derek, are with him. And as he was leaving the field, Mississippi State players saying, we are going to play for Nick. We have to win this one for him. Guys, this game means the world to Nick Fitzgerald. Williams, first down, Bulldogs. And wasn't it a remarkable scene, the, the, the shock, the anguish, the pain of Fitzgerald when they fired him, totally understandable with what happened. They finally calmed him down, got him on the cart. And as soon as that happened, he went into cheerleader mode. Oh, absolutely. He's a leader on this football team, and they're going to play for him. Under five minutes to go, first quarter, Thompson. Gang tackle driven backwards after getting a yard. You can see Mississippi State trying to establish the run with Keaton Thompson. Now, he's a capable thrower, but he's very raw. He's completed only eight of his 19 collegiate attempts. A little inaccurate, a little spotty, and somewhat streaky with some of his deliveries downfield. So getting the run game going is imperative for Dan Mullen in this Mississippi State offense with the true freshman under center. Second and nine, play fake. Thompson in the pocket and drills one complete for a first down. That's Osiris Mitchell. Flag right where the play ended. Mitchell gets up hobbling. Pass interference, number 87, wow. offense. 15-yard penalty, second down. Well, that's offensive pass interference. Head coach not happy about that one. Let's take a look at Mitchell. As he's coming back to the football, you can see him at the top. You can see collisions. You can see a push off as well. Now, I think you could also look at the other side and say the defender's all over him as well. But because of the way Hartsfield fell back, 
and the way that Mitchell's arm was extended, the officials are going to call that every single time on the offense. It looked like a little bit of incidental contact to me, but I can understand why the foul was called. And think about the, the implications of that penalty. First down inside the 30. Instead, it's second and 23 back from their own right around the 45 yard line. Williams trying to get some of that back, crosses midfield. Marcus Gates tackled him and then stood over him for a second. It's third down along. And the second consecutive drive for the Bulldogs when they are in third and extremely long. Last time it was third and 10 plus. Now it's third and 16. Almost impossible to convert when you're in these types of situations. Mississippi State does a lot of things well. Third and long would not be a strength of theirs. It's not a strength for, for anybody. For anybody. No. <laughs> Outside of maybe Aaron Rodgers. Play fake. Thompson gets drilled and goes backwards. So the big loss. It'll be fourth down. And that turned into a disaster for Mississippi State. Marquise Haynes who's playing his final game with the Rebels. Great job by Marquise Haynes right here. Running right at the mesh of the quarterback and the running back on the zone read. He forces Thompson to pull it, and Marquise Haynes quick enough to rally and bring down the quarterback for lost yardage. Great play by the senior. Punt for Mississippi State. High, relatively short, the fair catch at around the 18 yard line. Well, on this uh, Thanksgiving weekend, we got college football for you, not just Saturday, but also tomorrow, Friday. Number two undefeated Miami. They have to go on the road to take on uh, Pitt, noon Eastern on ABC to keep their college football playoff hopes realistic. Canes Panthers also streaming live on the app. And here are the college football playoff rankings brought to you by Capital One. And the Iron Bowl, Greg, you know the implications of that one, but it's not just Alabama Auburn this weekend. There's a bunch of them. Keep an eye on Clemson heading to Columbia, South Carolina. That game is going to be a crazy atmosphere for the Gamecocks and Tigers. No gimme for Clemson, that's for sure. Nice run for Jordan Wilkins. And right away, a first down for Ole Miss. It's been almost a decade since Ole Miss has had a 1,000 yard rusher in a single year. Wilkins is on his way to 90. He's what, about 50 more yards to get there? The run game in the last few weeks has come alive for Ole Miss. Now, movement along the line. False start, 73, offense. Five yard penalty, first down. It's a third false start for Ole Miss on first and 10. Now they always tell these Bulldog fans that are packing Davis Wade Stadium to ring responsibly <laughs> with the Cowbells and they're doing a good job of that. The Cowbells go quiet as they're under center. These O linemen for Ole Miss got to hang in there. I mean it's against the rules. You can be penalized for what the fans do with those noisemakers. Ta'amu has some athleticism of his own. Ta'amu first down to the 45 yard line. The junior from Pearl City Hawaii. A long way from home. He's a good north south runner. Shea Patterson, a little bit more like Johnny Manziel when he dances around. Tombu wants to go north and south right there. A nice pickup. Play fake on first down. He'll go deep towards Brown, but incomplete. You can see the adjustment that's been made by Mississippi State. Brown has two defenders in his direction just about. Every single snap over the last few, you can take a look at Todd Grantham, one of the best defensive coordinators in college football. What a job he's done this year with this Bulldog defense. They're aggressive, they're fast, and they're physical, trying to pay it off tonight. Most of the same players, dramatic improvement for Mississippi State's D. That pass completed along the right sideline, and the tackle just short of the first down marker to Marcus Lodge with the catch. I don't think you can overlook the impact that Grantham's made. I mean, he's going to blitz you. Maybe sometimes a little too much, but he has really challenged this defense. They tackle well, they hold up well in the trenches, and they're really committed to the system that he tries to employ. Now look at the num numeric improvement from last year to this year. 
If you use total defense, 110th last year, ninth in college football this year. Third and short, handoff, and some powerful running. I think that extra effort got the first down. Eric Swinney with a very strong run to get that couple of yards. It was a great run by Sweeney. JT Gray is right there. Boom. Usually the low man wins. JT Gray was a lone man, low man, and still didn't win. It's a credit to the power of the big sophomore running back. He deserved that high five. And they do get the play snapped. So this will be the final play of the first quarter. Perhaps fittingly, it's A.J. Brown with another catch, his fourth of the quarter for Ole Miss. We played 15 minutes. Here in Starkville, Ole Miss with the 7 0 lead. ESPN Thursday Night College Football brought to you by Nissan. Innovation that excites. And Jiffy Lou, proudly pouring Pennzoil synthetics. Rivalry series. And Ole Miss has started this game 7 0. That is held up as we start the second quarter here. Davis Wade with the. Rebels on the move in Mississippi State Territory, second and five from the 40. Jordan Ta'amu, their junior quarterback, faked the pass, now looking to run, made a couple Bulldogs miss. Came up a couple yards short, it'll be third down. This could be four down territory for Ole Miss. Obviously right here, kind of on the fringe. They've really dominated field position for a majority of the night. Knowing the way their defense is played, could be an opportunity to have two downs to get it. On third down and two, throwing the ball, and they hit Brown, but a great open field tackle. He stopped short, JT Gray. Brown's got to be more aware. Understand that you have just a couple yards to get. You have to get at least the yards to gain. He has it initially, but as he's brought back with the football, he's tackled just short, but Ole Miss will leave their offense out there. Last time they got in this type of formation, they just ran it up the middle and see what they do here. I do think he got a pretty generous spot as well. I got extra blockers in the game, and penalty flags are thrown. Wow. If that's against Ole Miss, what a big penalty that is. They needed a half a yard, if that. False start. 70. Offense. Five yard penalty. Four down. A big mistake by Jordan Sims. Man, that's got to be infuriating for Phil Longo. You can see 70, the right guard, just a little bit of a flinch. You see him pop out of his stance, trying to get a head start on what looked like it was going to be a naked boot out the backside. A little anxious. It's a fourth false start, though, for Ole Miss. They've stopped themselves a couple times. And that forces a punt. Huge difference there. And the punt is blocked. Maybe nobody in college football does this better than Mississippi State. They get another one. And guess who? The big guy, Jeffrey Simmons. Watch big number 94 attack this wall and put that big left hand out like Dikembe Mutombo and say, no, sir. What a huge play by this defense. And what a turn of events. About to go for it on fourth and short. False start, your punt, then it's blocked. Now your offense is on the field for Mississippi State with great field position. That's Simmons' third block kick. Sort of a fake run and a throw to nobody intercepted. Nobody on Mississippi State at least. Here come the Rebels with the return to midfield and more. There's a penalty flag at the end of the play, but that is not going to negate the turnover. C.J. Moore was playing deep safety, playing center field basically. Ball came right to him. Get 
thought the block punt was going to be a huge play. One play later, it feels a lot less important. After the play is over, personal foul. They hit out of bounds by number 74, the receiving or the passing team. 15 yard penalty, first down. Even worse for Mississippi State, the penalty on top of it. Just a crazy sequence. They're trying to hit a big vertical route down the seam. And you watch the safety. He just plays over the top of it. Keaton Thompson locking in. Even though his receiver did not get great separation, airmails it over the top, resulting in an easy interception for C.J. Moore. And then you add a little salt in the wound with a shove out of bounds. A huge turn of events right there as Mississippi State tried to go for the jugular after the sudden change in the momentum they got from the blocked punt. And if you're just tuning in, you missed, thankfully, a gruesome injury from the starter. Keaton Thompson, the true freshman backup in playing, and that was not his best effort. Pressure immediately, and the sack. Grant Harris got there right away. It's just unblocked. Center, Sean Rawlings is trying to get to him. He's lined up over the right guard. He can't get there in time. Results in a big play sack. Second and 20, delayed handoff with some room to run inside the 35. Third and long coming up. Keep an eye on number one, A.J. Brown. Every time they've gotten in third down, the progression has started with him. He's looking in that general direction. Brown wrestled to the ground, and no flag thrown. Finally, one comes in, and I think that had to be a penalty. He, he got spun around and tackled. Now, Dan Mullen doesn't like it, but... Pass interference. Number 12, defense. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Unless it looked different than it did live, that had to be a penalty, didn't it? I think so for sure. And you could see JT Gray out there overran it just a little bit as Brown tried to work to the corner. He reaches his right arm out and completely slows down Brown's momentum. These officials are going to call that every single time. And Brown maybe sold that a little bit. But still, that, I think that has to be a penalty inside the 20 first down. That's a big call. Wilkins trying to bounce it. Cannot get away. Another tackle for loss. This time, Mark McLaurin, the safety. Great job by McLaurin triggering him as soon as the ball was handed and getting into the backfield to contain the runner. Right here, Tom Moo in this Ole Miss offense. Trying to get back on track. They've been playing behind the sticks a little bit. Mississippi State, for the most part, has done a decent job on first down. Second and 13 to Amu in the pocket toward the end zone. It is incomplete. Demarcus Lodge, it looked to me like he got his hands up and had a chance. Could not catch it. Pretty well thrown ball by Tamu. Lodge slowed down just a little bit. I think he lost the football and found it late. He went up as though the ball was going to be to the inside. It was to the outside. He's got to make that catch for his quarterback in the back of the end zone. 7 nothing Ole Miss in field goal range on third and 13. Tamu throws short. The tight end catches, but not nearly enough. Dawson Knox. Presumably the field goal team will come on the field. Gary Wunderlich, who has been over his career one of the better kickers in the country, has tied tonight the Ole Miss all-time scoring record. This would be for the record all to himself. He's been a little banged up this year. He pulled his plant leg hamstring against Cal early and hasn't necessarily been 100% healthy until now. Good snap and hold. This one is right down the middle. The interception and the big return plus the penalty gave Ole Miss great field position. 
They capitalized for three more points, and that is the most field goals made, the most points in Ole Miss football history. 10 nothing Rebels here in the Egg Bowl. Pass interference against one of his wide receivers, Mississippi State's best scoring chance of the night, kind of negated that. This whole game, though, the, the injury to Fitzgerald is looming over everything. And Ole Miss, give them credit, they've come out ready to play. Their final game of the year, they won't be going to the postseason no matter what happens. A short kickoff this time. Let's see if it's returnable. Outside the 20, 25 still going to the 30, and pretty good field position. Dedrick Thomas with the return. Now, if you're just with us, we're not going to show this, at least in gruesome fashion. If you saw it one time, that was plenty enough for all time. But that's the play where Fitzgerald injures his presumably ankle, lower leg. Took a long time to get him ready to get on the cart. Showed some incredible toughness there at the end. Fitzgerald will be out now and for a while. And we're thinking about Nick Fitzgerald, that's for sure, having a great junior season. Now Thompson, the freshman quarterback, a handoff right up the middle. That's Kylan Hill, talented running back. He got a first down on his first carry of the night. Let's go down to Laura. Yeah, guys, Keaton Thompson trying to learn on the fly down here. Upset after the interception he threw. Coaches telling him to move on. Also telling him, hey, go encourage your teammates. He said, okay, I'll go over there and do that. Greg, he doesn't even know about trying to lead in a game right now. It's all new to him. All new. It's tough to learn on the fly in a game with this much anxiety. But he's a mature young man, a very smart young man. Dan Mullen actually was trying to debate, do we play him, do we redshirt him? First game of the year, he actually called his parents and said, hey, we're going to play your son, is that okay? And they were in full support. He's going to be a really good player in the years to come. And getting some experience in this Egg Bowl where he and everybody, I, I won't say he wasn't hoping, I'm sure he wanted to play in this game, certainly not under these circumstances. Keaton Thompson, very similar to Fitzgerald in terms of his pedigree as a runner. Dan Mullen loves to recruit those kinds of quarterbacks, figures he can work with them over some time to polish up those throwing mechanics. He has done it many times in the past. Third down and short. Thompson gives it. That's a first down. Williams. Regardless of, of how ready Keaton Thompson is for this environment, as you see Nick Fitzgerald out there wanting to cheer on his team, but watching from the from right outside the Bulldogs locker room, it's, the onus is going to be put on the offensive line. They got to control the line of scrimmage to take some pressure off this young freshman. Thompson keeps it. First down and more. You see the athletic gifts. Gosh. I don't know whether that's great to see or very hard to see. Fitzgerald just just wants to be on the field. It shows you what type of teammate he is. Of course, overcome with emotion, but cheering his guys on from as close as he can possibly get to the field. First down, that throw, a little screen type play down to the 20. To Dedrick Thomas, the sophomore from Memphis. I said a second ago though it's really going to come down to this offensive line they're one of the better groups in the SEC they're big they're physical Keaton Thompson is a work in progress as a passer they're not going to be able to do as much through the air so that means they got to lean on some of these talented big boys up front should still be able to run the ball not that time though Ole Miss crashed into the backfield and tackled Harris Williams right when he took the ball that's Benito Jones a very talented player on the inside. Yeah, Benito Jones hasn't had a ton of opportunities this year. Really in the last couple weeks, the light is starting to come on for him. Had such a huge season last year. You thought he was bound for stardom this season. Maybe taking a slight step back in production, but only a sophomore, still a lot of room to grow. Feels like a big game for him. From this state, knows so much about this rivalry, all the expectations. That was a big time play. It's third and seven. Thompson. Handoff and again backwards and again guess who. 
Benito Jones. The high school player of the year in the state of Mississippi a couple of years ago. Look at this. There's nobody deep in the middle of the field for Ole Miss. They know even on third and long that Mississippi State is going to have to try to run the football. They're selling out completely against the run, knowing and forcing Keaton Thompson to try to throw it. They're daring him to take a shot downfield. And this becomes a more challenging try. 44 yards, a little bit of a high snap. That kick, though, will bend back through. Had a little draw to it. And the redshirt freshman walk-on, Jace Crispin, who's had a nice year for the Bulldogs, gets the first three on the board for Mississippi State. And a beautiful butter cut draw. Just enough. And Mississippi State to stop the bleeding, cutting the rep. Ball from Oxford here to Starkville. That's a long jog. <laughs> Just to kind of kick off the game uh, unofficially. I'm going to volunteer you for that job next year. Next year? Think you can make it? Well, it might be less uh, damaging than playing in our crew turkey bowl. Could be. <laughs> they can feel the effects of both the next day. First three points on the board for Mississippi State. Kickoff into the end zone for a touchback as Ole Miss gets the ball back. Rivalry weekend. Two teams trying to avoid upsets and some upset possibilities here. Maybe in both of them. Number four, Oklahoma trying to stay in playoff position. They take on West Virginia in Norman, 345 Eastern Time on ESPN. And then at 7.30, that's the game you had kind of circled earlier. Number three, Clemson against their rivals on the road. South Carolina, both games on ESPN, both with huge playoff implications. I just remember Clemson against Syracuse earlier this year. They beat Syracuse in 2016, 54-0. They beat South Carolina last year, 56-3, or right around there. So maybe as they go on the road, similar things could happen. It is a possibility. South Carolina's had a nice year. They really have. Will Muschamp. Should be on everybody's list for a potential SEC Coach of the Year award. Dan Mullen, Nick Saban again, Gus Malzahn's done a nice job, but Will Muschamp may be as good as anybody. With some injuries as well. Six minutes to go until halftime. Amu got to the corner, first down, and will duck out of bounds at the 41-yard line. Jordan Tamu, the junior, junior college transfer from Hawaii, who was not recruited much in high school, played for a Pearl City program that has produced some college football players. Went to the New Mexico Military Institute and wasn't even really highly recruited out of there, but came to Ole Miss, now getting a chance to play. Wilkins stays low. He kind of hides from would-be tacklers. He got nine on first down. And I was there in the spring. I was really excited to see Shea Patterson. How much had he grown? And I, and I was on the field, and I said, man, who the heck is 10? This guy's a player. And he's really played well in a difficult spot over the last four games as the starter. There's no knock on Shea Patterson, who is talented as well, and now hurt and out for the year. But Tahamu is a talented kid in his own right, overshadowed. That run goes for a loss. Boyette with the tackle. Family is here. Mom is here. Louisa. Starkville is a long way from Honolulu. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. But to see your son play in an environment like this, no distance is too far. And you can see Shea Patterson. He's anxious to get healthy, that's for sure. Wishing him a speedy recovery as well. Third and two. Ball right at midfield. Tamu kept it, and he could have been tackled for a big loss. He'll be tackled for a loss anyway. I mean, the initial defender didn't know that he had the ball. That Jeffrey Simmons was in the backfield so fast. Look at that snap wow. anticipation. And he didn't see the little play fake. That was actually the same play they tried to run earlier on third and one. Surprised they went back to the well so quickly, not fooling Mississippi State there. Me too. Gleason will punt it away. Miles, the punt returner. This one does not get blocked. Fair catch at about the 12 yard line. 
Well, with the backup quarterback in, can Mississippi State move the ball? Final four minutes or so of the first half. Season long. And the fans here so loud, so into it, but also so stunned with what happened to their quarterback, Nick Fitzgerald. Out for the game and for the year, we presume. First and ten with Keaton Thompson, and now a player for Mississippi State jumps early. False start. 61. Offense. Five-yard penalty. First down. Let's go downstairs to Laura Rutledge. Yeah, Dave, Nick Fitzgerald is out for the rest of this game, and the Mississippi State athletic trainers tell me that they're officially calling it an ankle injury. They are still waiting for more word on exact results on this injury so they can finalize, but he's over there cheering, and they said he's threatening to lose his voice. He's cheering so loud from that tunnel. Thank you, Laura. You can see him getting the crutches set up, too. Looks like he wants to start moving around. The handoff. And even though with under four minutes to go, you kind of wonder, will Mississippi State be aggressive, try to get into that two-minute, four-minute style offense uh, with the true freshman quarterback this part of the field? You kind of think maybe not. Yeah, I kind of got to think that they are got to get to halftime here without further damage. Well, this is defense has more return yards on the two interceptions than Mississippi State has passing yards. They're underwater in the pass game. Now another flinch. It's going to be a second false start. False start. 17. Offense. Penalty's half the distance to the goal line. Second down. Couch the wide receiver. Yeah, this is a tough spot to be in for your true freshman quarterback. His toe is about two yards in his own end zone. Hasn't experienced this type of adversity before in his career. You have to think Dan Mullen is going to opt to play pretty conservative, even though it looks like Ole Miss is trying to challenge him to throw it. Second and 18. A little play fake. Thompson was looking to throw, now running. And Thompson gets out to the 15 yard line. And a penalty flag at the end of the play. Now, I don't know about that one. They're going to call Polk, I think, for jumping on top of the QB. He did not go into a slide. After the play was over, personal foul. Late hit, player on the ground, number 24 of the defense. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. At first glance, it looked like it was pretty bang bang, but you could see Thompson not liking anything downfield. Good job of his offensive line. Man. Hanging in there. I, I don't see what the officials saw right there. He, I, he wasn't even down when he first he, made contact still, with it. He's still aerial. I, how do you call that? That's, I don't know about that one. I know you're trying to protect quarterbacks and whatnot, but that's not a slide. That's a huge play, too. That gives some breathing room out to the 30. Maybe that changes things for Dan Mullen. We'll see. Two and a half minutes to go, now less than that. Williams got met immediately. That gives you an idea. Not playing with a whole lot of time urgency. Both teams have all three timeouts. Nobody's called a timeout. If you're Ole Miss right here on defense, if you can force another tackle for minimal gain, you might start thinking about potentially calling a timeout to set up your own two-minute drill. I might have done it after that first down play if I really wanted to be aggressive. And off again, Williams picking his way forward and got close. I don't think he quite got there. That's why you don't do it after the first down play, though, because you still have two downs potentially to get it. If they would have called a timeout right there, they're basically helping out Mississippi State. But if they would have tackled them behind the line of scrimmage, then they could have made a potential call to get their offense ball back with more time. I hear the reaction. One of the officials came in and moved the ball back about a half a yard. It is third down. And I think it was the right spot. Now they'll wind the clock. Thompson keeps, gets that first down. The ball came out. He fumbled it, and Ole Miss has it. Yeah, that's a turnover. Speaks on the football. Ole Miss gets it back with a minute 22. Now Ole Miss, the, 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 the Rebels just finding out that they got the ball. I don't think their sideline even knew. The third turnover of the first half for Mississippi State. That ball definitely came out. 
<laughs> you can see Breland. Breland speaks. Oh, man. Having a little fun as he dives on the football. He saw our camera coming for him. Man, a huge turn of events right there. Mississippi State just trying to get a fresh set of downs, maybe take it to halftime. Their quarterback fumbles for the first time in over a year, and they lose it. Huge I, play, and now the Rebels can get aggressive in the passing game. They can. Yeah, a minute 22, all three timeouts, ball in Mississippi State territory. You don't have to just think about a field goal. Dahamu took off real early. I don't know if that was a design run or what. Timeout called by Ole Miss. That first down play could have gone better for the Rebels after coming up with a big turnover, trying to get points on the board near halftime. They lead 10 3. So, all of our folks across our ESPN college football coverage, Thanksgiving, a holiday for being thankful for those you care about, your friends, your family, and uh, we are family of all of us who cover this sport for ESPN. Tamu, second and 12. That one into coverage incomplete. McLaurin, the safety was there. Third and 12 coming up after the fumble, the turnover in Mississippi State territory. They are not in field goal range. Matt Luke and company, they need some more yardage. Passing game. For Ole Miss has been a little bit inconsistent when targeting anyone other than number one, A.J. Brown, who's been a feature player early. Third and 12. Kamu. Some pressure comes at last and a big hit. Man, the ball is out. Mississippi State thinks they have it. The two who got the sack, got the hit, didn't know that Tamu had fumbled, but Ole Miss comes up with the ball. I'm not sure who recovered. Simmons saying he has it. I mean, Simmons has the ball. I, I don't know whether they pointed the wrong way or what. I, 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 he may not know he pointed the wrong way, you think? Yeah, I mean, they... I don't know what happened there. That was a strange sequence of events. They're winding the clock now. Yeah, and you can see the ball clearly out. Look at uh, how is that not recovery for Simmons? He has the ball. Yeah, that's what it looks like to me. I mean, yeah, they got to look at that. that is, I don't know what possibly could have called that ruling. Correction on the ruling on the field. Ball became loose and the defense fell in the ball. Yeah. First down, Mississippi. Yeah, I think they just got confused in the communication because that one was clear. Great job right here by number 40, Harold Thompson. See him slip inside. Wilkins doesn't even see him. Who's in protection at running back? He jars that ball loose. Errol Thompson filling in for the injured Des Harris has had himself a heck of a first half. Just a redshirt freshman. He's going to be a really good player for this team from Florence, Alabama. Now the question is can Mississippi State, even getting the ball on this side of the field with all of their timeouts, can they make anything of that turnover? And they do put some time back on the clock. In fact, a good chunk of time. With these three timeouts in their hip pocket, they don't have to get into pass first mode. If they want to run it, they can. Mississippi State adjusts the defense at the snap. Thompson scrambling. Thompson. Man, he's hard to get down, but he takes some hits, doesn't he? A little quarterback draw. See if you can't get the two minute drive started. Those timeouts do give you the luxury of, of not using pure. Two minute drive play calling. Timeout Mississippi State trying to get organized with 56 seconds to go until halftime. We'll be right back.
56 seconds to go until halftime. Second and five, Mississippi State with two timeouts remaining. Their true freshman quarterback, Keaton Thompson, with Fitzgerald out for the game with an ankle injury. Second and five, Thompson pressured immediately. You don't want to take a sack. Will throw. It is incomplete. Incomplete. Mississippi State looking for the flag. Better than a sack. It's third and five. Good job right there by Thompson getting out of trouble, trying to give his receiver an opportunity to make a play. You can see his immaturity a little bit in the pocket. Right there, he actually drifted into some problems right into the back of his right tackle. Now he's going to have an opportunity here on third and five to pick up something through the air, more than likely. But at halftime, he's going to have to settle down. And he's going to have to get on the same page with Dan Mullen, see what he's comfortable running in the passing game. You need a first down and more for realistic field goal range. Pressure comes. Thompson trying to get away. Right at the line of scrimmage gets dragged down. Thompson's going to be slow getting up. Speaks is having a big first half. It's fourth and six. Mississippi State is going to be content to let time wind down. I don't even know. Would you attempt a super long field goal here? We've seen crazy things happen on super long field goal attempts on rivalry week and before. Yes. Maybe you just run it down and throw one to the end zone. I think that's probably the more likely scenario because this is a long one here potentially for Chrisman. Now Ole Miss called a timeout which OK you understand that but you, you do that 20 seconds ago. So if they do throw the Hail Mary or you discourage him from throwing a Hail Mary you have it with some decent field position but they call it with 15 seconds left on the clock. We'll see what Mississippi State wants to do. Well, coming up later tonight, 11:30 Eastern, number four Michigan State out in Portland, going to play some college hoops against DePaul, the PK80 tournament quarterfinal, right here on ESPN. All kinds of good teams out there in Portland for that new event. Michigan State, one of the teams inside the top 25 in both football and men's basketball. Alabama is another one of those. I'm excited to see Avery Johnson's got the boys fired up. Well, they are going to run a uh, screen type play with some blocking Williams trying to bounce it outside inside the 20 with six seconds on the clock. What a great play call by Mississippi State that puts him in position to try for three. That is such a good play call by Dan Mullen. I love it. Such a good play call. He sees. That there's going to be some opportunities, only rushing three. And, and Ole Miss, not to interrupt you, but Ole Miss, by calling that timeout with 15 seconds left, you allow them to do that. If you just let them wind it down, it's going to be a Hail Mary play, and your chances of getting points aren't great. They, I mean, they gave Mississippi State the chance to run a play, call timeout, and then presumably send the field goal team out there. That's why it was just such a terrific play call. If you look at Ole Miss's defenders, they were way deep thinking that they were going to take a shot down the field. Instead, they say, hey, we'll just drop it right here to the running back, see what he can pick up with his legs, and see if we can't steal three uh, before the end of half. Just really well executed by Mississippi State and a real nice, timely play call by Dan Mullen. And I do, I do not get that from Ole Miss's perspective. 37-yard try from that left hash mark. The kick is on its way, and it is good. The final play of the first half, and there's something positive for a Bulldogs team that you can understand, Greg, has been shocked for much of this first half with what happened to their quarterback. They have rallied, got down 10 early, responded well, got to find some answers at halftime. Happy Thanksgiving to our friends back in studio. 10 6 Ole Miss now, and Dan and Jesse. Take it away, guys. Coach, I know how much Nick Fitzgerald means to you. What was it like watching him get carted off this field? Well, it's always tragic. You know, when you look at the guys on the team and the guys, all these guys put so much in. Uh, to see him have a gruesome injury like that is uh, is always hard on everybody on our sideline. But, uh, you know, he'll come back. And, uh, you know, on him, he'll work his tail off to get himself ready to go as soon as possible. 
Keaton Thompson, what do you say to him at halftime to maybe improve some things offensively? Well, he's just got to relax and go play, you know, go play. Guys around him got to pick up their plays. A true freshman coming into a pretty big situation out here, but he's worked hard all year for this opportunity. He's got the opportunity. We've, we've been devastated with injuries all year long, and next guy's always stepped up, and he's seen other guys do it. Now it's his chance. All right, thanks, Coach. Thank you. Coach, you're an Ole Miss guy. You know a lot about this rivalry. Knowing that and just how crazy it can get, what was your message to these guys? Just keep playing. We got 30 minutes left together. Let's just go finish this. Oh, sorry. All right. Thanks, Coach. Yeah, thank you. How about this scene in Starkville Nick Fitzgerald a gruesome ankle injury took him out of this egg bowl early he is now on the field with his crutches and trying to get his home fans fired up as Mississippi State needs to come from behind we're just about ready to start the third quarter 10 6 Ole Miss looking for an upset win here in this 114th egg bowl the injury to Fitzgerald of course has completely changed this game the strategy of the game the feel here inside the stadium and yet just a four point lead for Ole Miss after their great start in this one. Bulldogs looking for their ninth win of the season and they will get the ball to start the second half. Ole Miss kicks it deep toward the goal line but a little bit short and a returnable kick for Mississippi State out across the twenty five. Yard line. Well, Dave Fleming, Greg McElroy back with you here in Starkville. And the injury really did. It's hard to overstate what that changed about this rivalry game. Yeah, it was huge. Nick Fitzgerald means so much to this team, so much to this community. And him going down early was a huge emotional blow to the entire sideline, the entire stadium. But he is going to give it all he has to lead from the sideline. Now, his backup, Keaton Thompson, didn't get off to a great start. Bad throw early, but you can see some of the athleticism. He's got to dial in and be more accurate in the second half, but you can see the gifts that he has when it comes to being a, a good runner. Well, Fitzgerald is out on the sideline with his teammates now. He also was on the phone or whatever from the locker room with this tweet he sent out just minutes ago. I'll be back stronger and better than ever. I love all my Hale State fam, and I want now is for you all to ring your bells as loud as you can and support this team. Showing some real uh, toughness and leadership after a gruesome, all they're describing it is as an ankle injury to the star junior quarterback, Nick Fitzgerald. Thompson, option style play, keeps it. Thompson across the 30, 
Makes it third down and a little bit shorter. Let's go down to Laura Rutledge. Yeah, guys, I'm told that Nick Fitzgerald during halftime was on his crutches, but they wanted to keep him away from the rest of the team so that nobody hurt him. Obviously, they're trying to keep him as safe as possible, didn't want him to get too hyped up. He didn't speak to the team, did not address them, but did spend some time with Keaton Thompson, giving him some advice for the second half. We'll see that, I'm sure, too, down on the sideline as well. All right, thank you, Lauren. You can see him just uh, beyond your shoulder. There he is with a third and four coming up. And you know how many... Uh, messages he's getting from folks I'm sure all around college football of support another Mississippi State player is down on the field as we speak Darrell Williams sophomore offensive lineman part of a really strong Mississippi State unit up front looking at his ankle and that's potentially a pretty big loss he's the left guard watch him as he's going down yeah, just, See just landing a little awkwardly. Maybe got the toe caught. Cleat caught. Uh, potentially a pretty big loss, though. Mississippi State, they're going to have to run the football. With a true freshman at quarterback, having your offensive line at 100% is paramount. Now with the injury to Williams, a backup in at left guard. Let's see if this forces them to adjust what they're doing offensively. I think it's Michael Story who has gone into play left guard in Williams place. Third and four. First moments of this second half. Thompson with pressure coming picked up by the running back. What a block by Williams and that allows Thompson to get the first down. Wow. That is picking up the pressure from the running back spot. That is big time. Right there by Williams. You'll see the internal pressure. Look at him save a life. Taylor Polk thinks that he's unblocked. Think again. <laughs> he got blocked and then some. Man, that's big time. Saving a hit on your quarterback. That's the stuff the NFL scouts love. Every great running back can run, but can they block and are they willing to? Williams showing he's up to the task. There's Williams. You figure he's going to have to carry a lot of the load. Thompson play fake to him. There goes Thompson across midfield. Thompson hit from behind, but not before a big game. 31 yards. Just a great start to the second half so far for Mississippi State. Getting Thompson in the open field doing what he is most comfortable doing that's carrying it looking a little bit like Nick Fitzgerald there with the long strides and you do wonder whether halftime is going to really help Thompson in this offense after the play fake across the middle and that one is incomplete in the hands of Jesse Jackson with some contact there second and ten a lot of contact there in the back end Jalen Julius very fortunate that a pass interference wasn't called. Look at Julius. He's grabbing. He's holding. It's actually a good throw by Keaton Thompson. Probably the most accurate throw he's had tonight, trying to hold up his receiver with a back shoulder. And Dan Mullen, very disappointed with the officiating to this point. He watched the replay just like we did and reacted to that. Thompson, play fake with a wall of defenders there to meet him. Third down coming up. You just think about the shock of the Fitzgerald injury and how stunned everybody for Mississippi State was when that happened. Keaton Thompson prepares during the week but has to jump into this game with everything spinning in his head. Whether halftime maybe calmed him down, allow the offensive coaches to work with him a little bit. Yeah, it's amazing what halftime can do, especially for a young player. Have the coaches talk to him, like Laura told us, Nick Fitzgerald talked to him. Trying to pick him up. The biggest thing that you need a quarterback is confidence. Keaton Thompson trying to find some. Let's see if Mississippi State can continue. Maybe they should screen right here as Ole Miss shows a little pressure. They're not really yet in reasonable field goal range. They do show pressure again. This time not picked up. Thompson goes down. He did not see that coming. Austrian Robinson with the hit and the sack. Robinson's just unblocked off the left hand side. Now remember, new left guard in the game because of the injury to Daryl Williams. Maybe there was a miscommunication 
between the left guard who's new and the tackle Rankin that didn't cause them to get out to the rusher that resulted in the sack. Brown back there to receive. You saw the head coach Matt Luke saying safe. This one end over end. Bounces inside and will be downed at the one. What great coverage and execution from the punt team. Well done. Chris Rayford got the ball down after Logan Cook, the punter, executed on both sides. Can't do it any better than that. <laughs> this side of the field as Ole Miss takes over on the one. Jordan Tamu's back is about 15 yards from what is one of the more crazy student sections you'll see in the Southeastern Conference. If you're going to be backed up, that's not the end of the field that you want to be backed up on. In that shotgun spot deep in the end zone. With Jordan Wilkins alongside. Ball start. Number nine. Often. Tells you half the distance to the goal line. First down. What's that, a foot? Half the distance? <laughs> Maybe. Ole Miss got off to that quick start. First three plays, 80 yards. The next 30 since then, 89 yards. Now they've made some adjustments defensively as Mississippi State. It's a credit to their D.C., Todd Grant. From the end zone, a play fake. Tamu going deep incomplete. He had his man. Demarcus Lodge had a step or two. Wow. That had a chance to be the longest play in Ole Miss history. I can promise you that had a chance to be with the longest play in college football history at 99 yards. Can't get any longer than that. It is tough to overthrow Demarcus Lodge. He's the fastest player on the field. Tamu just needed a little more air underneath that to let Lodge run underneath it. So second and ten. They get it snapped. Wilkins got out of the end zone. Not much more than that. This is danger zone for Ole Miss. Five put some pressure on that throw is almost intercepted. Not a smart throw, but the rush was coming. It's fourth down. Now, how do you punt? Man, Ta'amu is lucky that this ball sank on him. You see, nothing there originally. Whoa. Comes out of his hand with very little command, and luckily. For Tahamu, that ball dives right at Cleveland's feet. That would have been pick six if he threw it clean. Leeson's got to be real careful. Here comes the rush. He got it off. And all things considered, that is a pretty good punt. That could have been worse for Ole Miss. 38 yards, no return from that part of the field. I think Matt Luke will take it. Absolutely. And a good job by Gleason. And look at how fast he gets this punt off on his foot. One, two, boom. Most punters, sometimes you see three steps depending on how much time they have. He knew that Mississippi State was coming after it. So he got it out and to the sideline. Well done and well executed in special teams. The defense and the special teams combined to give the Bulldogs great field position, their best starting field position of the game. Now, can the true freshman and the offense take advantage of it? Handoff Williams scores through. Nice game. And that's not Williams, that's Kylan Hill, the true freshman from just up the road, Columbus, Mississippi. They think he's got a chance to be a really good one. He's going to be really special, one of the highest rated recruits. That Mississippi State has had very explosive and versatile. He's got an extremely bright future here at Starkville. Second and one. He's had some nice runs in this game. Thompson faked it to him, kept it. And that was a good decision in the end. First down inside the 25. 
hear this crowd starting to come alive. They're getting a glimpse right now of the future with true freshmen at both running back and at quarterback in the backfield. Dan Mullen told us at halftime he is confident no matter what the final diagnosis is. Fitzgerald's going to be back and fine, but for now, the offense is in this guy's hands. From New Orleans, Louisiana, huge Dak Prescott fan. As a high school player, one of the main reasons why he came here. A pitch on the option play. Another good decision by Thompson. Inside the 20, the big hit on Hill. And he took a big hit there on his hip, his quad. Ole Miss said they were going to be physical tonight. And Mississippi State. Decides to go with the speed option and Breland speaks. The defensive end made his presence known. Now a lot of people will probably look at that and say that should be targeting. He's hitting a quarterback in the head or neck area. But that was not a defenseless player. That was within the limits of the law because Thompson was actually carrying the football in that particular instance. Uh, Hill they'll hope he's OK. Thompson looks to be OK himself. Hill's given him a nice spark on the ground. Second and five. In case you're just wondering, the third string quarterback, the guy who would be next up if something were to happen to Thompson, is Logan Burnett, who is a redshirt freshman walk on who's never thrown a pass in a game. He's taken a couple snaps, but never thrown a pass. Play clock winding down. Second and five. Another option, another pitch. Williams cuts it inside. Good pursuit from Breland Speaks. I've been really impressed with him tonight. Breland Speaks is could be his final game if he does in fact opt to go to the NFL. He's a fourth year junior. And he's good enough to potentially make that jump. At some point though, this Mississippi State offense has to challenge this Ole Miss defense downfield. I know they're trying to run the ball. They're trying to establish the line of scrimmage. But Ole Miss is begging for a deep shot with how many guys they have up near the line of scrimmage. Third and four. Thompson keeps with all of those bodies. The ball came out. He fumbles for the second time. Ole Miss has the football. That is the fourth turnover for Mississippi State. They were in field goal range. A.J. Moore, the guy who finally fell on it. And the second fumble from Keaton Thompson, the true freshman. Seven thirty on the SEC Network. All right, that's SEC Saturday night. Texas A&M, LSU, and lots of stuff swirling around those programs, especially A&M here in the Egg Bowl on Thanksgiving night. Wilkins takes the handoff after another Mississippi State turnover. This was just moments ago, and in fact, may be still going on. Thompson was even closer to Fitzgerald a, a couple minutes ago. They were talking after that fumble by the true freshman quarterback. Yeah, and they just got to hang in there. And Fitzgerald's got to tell Thompson, "Hey, look, we've turned it over four times. We're down by four. We're in this. Our defense is keeping it close. We got to make some plays." Play fake. Tamu in the pocket. Brown wide open. Caught. What a catch! AJ Brown. Touchdown. There is a penalty flag though. Back near the line of scrimmage. The ups and downs of a rivalry game. Wow. So that is on the defense and the touchdowns going to stand. What a play to Amu and then especially on the receiving end the kid from Starkville back in his hometown breaking hearts. A.J. Brown having a monster egg bowl. Seventy seven yards. Think about that sequence. The turnover in field goal range, no points for Mississippi State. 
And then that the second play of the drive. Why not get it to number one. Unbelievable. A.J. Brown a captain. For the first time. In his hometown. Putting on an absolute show. Six catches. 167 yards. And a touchdown with 22 minutes left to play. Big time big time talent A.J. Brown. That was a great catch. Extra point is up and good. And I do think part of what he was screaming at fans or who knows maybe some of his own supporters. I couldn't tell was essentially this is my city and here it is right here he fakes like he's going in and then goes over the top. They hit this post route a little earlier in the game. Look at the subtle steps to the inside. Brandon Bryant there at safety has no chance in a one on one situation. And how about the catch full extension. By A.J. Brown reaching out and plucking it. In thin air and a terrific throw by Ta'amu. Missed a deep one a second ago to Demarcus Lodge. Not going to miss a second one. Puts it on the money to his most explosive weapon at wide receiver. I mean, I'm with you. That that little subtle adjustment you could see on that last shot to veer over over the shoulder, full extension. Wow. And the route to create the separation. I mean, you see him earlier in the game on the same route where he bends around that underneath defender right there, being patient enough to sell it to the inside to get the safety to bite, and then hitting it up over the top. Just a well rounded player that can do it all for the Rebels. More receiving yards than anybody in the SEC, more receiving touchdowns than anybody in the SEC with that penalty that was accepted on the kickoff. Ole Miss would kick it off from midfield. Probably just booted in the end zone, but who knows? It has been a record setting night for A.J. Brown. All time single season record in Ole Miss football history. Most receiving yards in a single year. And that one is in the end zone and a touchback. Now, for Mississippi State, how do you generate offense? Instead of kicking a field goal and going down one, you're down by 11 with seven minutes to go in the third quarter on offense that's missing its quarterback and leader. No need to press panic if you're Mississippi State offensively. Still, obviously, plenty of time left in the game. You can still run your entire offense. Clearly, Keaton Thompson is most comfortable running the football, and I would expect them to start this upcoming possession with that. As you can see, Todd Grantham, the defensive coordinator, livid with the way his defense played that deep ball a second ago. That's been the offense for Ole Miss. Two long pass plays to A.J. Brown. That's, I, I won't say that's all of it, but that's most of it. He's got 167 yards. They've got 250 total. Thompson, hands off. Hill back in the game. That's good news for Mississippi State. Out to the 30 for a five yard run. And I know they're going to try to run the football. That's what Mississippi State does. But at some point, they have to challenge this Rebel defense deep. The safeties for Ole Miss not respecting the pass at all. Move the ball on the ground. Hill, not much running room this time. Maybe got a yard. It'll be third down. Those big guys up front for Ole Miss, I, I know that rushing total is over 200 yards now for Mississippi State. I've been impressed with the way they played up front. They've hung in there. A group that has really struggled over the course of the season. Played a little bit better here in the last few games. Big, big third down right here for Mississippi State. Third and four with Fitzgerald in the game. This is where Mississippi State is so comfortable with Thompson. I don't know. Back to pass in the pocket. Throws and zipped one in there to the biggest wide receiver in America. He fumbles. Another turnover. Jordan Thomas had the first down and more. That is the fifth turnover. That should have been a big gain and a huge play. In 
instead more disappointment for the Bulldogs. Man. Thomas. Sideline warning. Old Miss, their first of the game. Running up field, but how about Taylor Polt? Number 24. The senior playing his final football game for the Rebels. Getting in there and stripping that ball. It's amazing, this Ole Miss defense. Once such a proud defense. The Land Sharks. I know so much is made about what they've done on offense, but defensively they have struggled so much the last few years. And tonight, coming into the game, only eight turnovers forced all year. And still with 21 minutes remaining in the game, they forced five against what is a very good offense when it comes to protecting the football. J. Brown and the turnovers. That's been the story. Ta'amu incomplete. And this is no knock against everybody else because Lodge and Metcalf, they got a lot of good talent at wide receiver. But whenever they've gone to anybody but A.J. Brown, they, there's just been almost nothing. Yeah, A.J. Brown has been a man amongst boys tonight. There's no denying that. You mentioned it. I mean, this is a talented group across the board, but A.J. Brown has 159 more yards than any other receiver. And off Wilkins ran into his own man and then a lot in the other color. Let's go down to Laura. Guys, we saw Todd Grantham fired up. He was telling his defense, it's in your head. You just think you can't cover Brown, and that's why you're not able to cover him. And maybe there's something to that. That's a good pickup from Laura down on the sideline, but there's also a physical aspect of it as well. It's not all mental. Yeah, this guy's a beast. They're not the only ones. Teams across the SEC have struggled to cover Brown all year. Record setting year for him. Third and long to Amu. Intercepted, no! Oh my goodness, Jamal Peters was headed the other way and maybe for points. And he dropped it. Man. Mississippi State needed that in the worst way. Sudden change. They almost got one of their own. Jamal Peters, he gets two hands on it, breaks on it perfectly, exactly what you teach in your week of preparation. He just can't come up with it. That could have been huge. He had the pick six on the road against AM a few weeks ago. He was definitely thinking about another one there. Angled punt, fair catch at uh, 15 or so. Timeout here in Starkville. Ole Miss playing a spirited Egg Bowl. They lead 17-6. Time for We've Got You Covered, brought to you by Jiffy Lube. The defense of Ole Miss coming up with the ball tonight, huh? They've done a tremendous job. Every opportunity that they've had on an errant throw, they've converted. They've caught it, and then they've been really good when it comes to recovering fumbles. Coming into tonight, they had recovered only two fumbles as a defense. They've already had three tonight. It's amazing how opportunistic they've been. And it's really a testament to their personnel playing as hard as humanly possible in their final game of the season. Final game, they know they're not going to a bowl, self-imposed bowl ban. Hill gets the handoff from Thompson. And Ole Miss is on to that. Kylan Hills had some success. He lost a yard there. You see a little bit of swagger coming back on this Ole Miss defense. You see that land shark hand go up on the helmet. It's something that we haven't seen as often. In the last few years, this defense has struggled, but playing with some swagger here tonight. Statistically, over these last few years, they've gone from the best to almost the worst defense in the country. Thompson down the sideline incomplete. I don't know if that was supposed to be a back shoulder kind of throw or what. Now he's trying to find an isolation on the right-hand side, but he missed a huge opportunity over the middle of the field. Look right here as he's working across the field, number 82, Farad Green, and he's wide open. This is something that Keaton Thompson's going to learn. Take what the defense gives you, and eventually they give you the game right there, trying to hit the wrong wide receiver in the progression. 
Third and 11 for the true freshman backup. Thompson, plenty of time across the middle, and a block helps seal things to get the first down. Couch with some help from his teammates. That's a big play. Really nice design right there by Dan Mullen. That's kind of like a bubble screen, but it's actually a crossing route coming from the other direction. You have some blockers out in front. It's an easy pitch and catch for Keaton Thompson, and they pick up a much needed first down. Four minutes to go, third quarter. Thompson will get rid of it. Dangerous throw, and he took another hit. He has taken a bunch of them tonight. Pops up, he's okay. Gets up quick, like a pro. You can see hit coming in from all over the place. Freeland speaks once again, delivering the blow. He's been everywhere for Ole Miss tonight. What could be his final game for the Rebels? So many of these players playing their final Egg Bowl. Ole Miss, all their seniors, and who knows, maybe some others playing their final games. That Ole Miss uniform. Thompson on second down, handed it off for a short game. And oh, look, I, oh, Mississippi State fans don't want to hear about it, but there is at least a chance, if you believe all the talk around, that this will be the final game coached by Dan Mullen in this stadium. I, 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 those are just rumors, and we asked Dan about it, and he didn't say a whole lot other than there will be a time when he's no longer the Mississippi State head coach. Whether he's fired or hired somewhere else, he's done a tremendous job here. Tremendous. Unprecedented success and, and sustained success. success. On third down, Thompson a little play fake. And now on the move, Thompson goes down. The sack by Ole Miss. Ryan Ryder Anderson, the true freshman from Texas. And then he's got a chance to be a good one. Yes, brother Rodney Anderson is a standout running back at Oklahoma. Starter there for the Sooners. See Ryder Anderson just working inside against Martinez Rankin and getting home. Nothing there originally. That's a covered sack right there, but a good job by Anderson cashing in. Fourth and 14. Mississippi State will punt the ball away. Pressure came, but a clean punt. He's going to bounce and take a whole miss bounce in field position for the Rebels. Well, tonight on Sports Center after our game, Herm Edwards on the drama in Dallas, and there certainly is some with the former Bulldogs quarterback Dak Prescott struggling here these last few weeks. Jesse Palmer on the best available SEC job, and there are a bunch of them. <laughs> Auburn's Iron Bowl advantage. Kenny May and Mac Fredos on ESPN. When we are done, you know the Iron Bowl. What do you think? I, I think it's going to be a tremendous game, and that's one of the most difficult places to play there in Jordan-Hare at Auburn. It's really going to come down to who controls the line of scrimmage. Both defensive lines elite, both offensive lines elite. Whoever wins that matchup is likely going to win the game and punch their ticket to Atlanta for the SEC championship. First and ten to Amu. Looking deep, he'll go deep, and this one is an adjustment and a catch, and a broken tackle for a touchdown. DK Metcalf. Oh my goodness! Been watching too much New York Giants. He gets a penalty flag for that one. That's not going to make them feel any better, though. Sixty three yards and a heck of a play by Metcalf the red shirt freshman after the play was over unsportsmanlike conduct number 14 correction number 14 of the scoring team this penalty be enforced on the succeeding kickoff it was all the play touchdown this is number 14's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game DK Metcalf one of the biggest Tallest wide receivers in the SEC. Been quiet the last couple weeks. Finally emerges with a huge catch and run. He's a little taller. He does physically look like his teammate A.J. Brown and how strong he looks. He is talented in his own right. He 
is big and physical. And has had a lot of opportunities. You remember the game winning catch a little earlier this year against Kentucky, but he's a big time player. So is this guy, Nick Fitzgerald, sideline. He and the heart broken at the full dog. And Thursday night college football here on Thanksgiving as part of the Jiffy Lube rivalry series. A rivalry that has so much venom around it these days. And the Ole Miss players are living it up tonight. They got a huge break when Nick Fitzgerald went down with the injury. But they have played really well on the road with their season ending, all the stuff swirling around this Ole Miss program. Penalty on Metcalf after the uh, gesture. Once he scored the touchdown, should be good field position for Mississippi State. And it is good field position. Let's go down on the field to Laura Rutledge. Dave, you're talking about how much this rivalry means on both sides, and it's particularly important to a couple players who are having great games tonight. A.J. Brown, of course, from here in Starkville, part of a huge recruiting battle between these schools. And then Jeffrey Simmons, also a widely publicized recruiting battle between Mississippi State and Ole Miss. Of course, he decided to go to Mississippi State. And then as we told you about Leo Lewis to start this game, he, of course, the Mississippi State player that is part of the NCAA's basic witness to uh, bolster their case against Ole Miss. So just so much at stake here on both sides for these players. Ole Miss being investigated by the NCAA. They've had their hearing. The uh, ruling should come out any time now. And it's been two different investigations that have been opened up over the last two plus years concerning Ole Miss football and the athletic department in general. Phone records that were pulled and called through by a writer who covers Mississippi State that ultimately led to the forced resignation of Hugh Freeze. You got that element to this rivalry now. The players testifying, lawsuits back and forth. One of, one of the lawsuits just recently got petitioned to the Mississippi State Supreme Court, where a couple of the Mississippi State players are being sued by a sporting goods store in Oxford for some version of defamation of character alleged violations the list grew more serious self-imposed sanctions including a postseason ban this year we're waiting to find out whether those sanctions will be enough according to the NCAA or whether more punishment will be coming nobody knows yet and all of that woven into the fabric of this rivalry where a lot of folks think it is just now the most venomous poisonous rivalry in college football in sports so it's hard to find people on either side to say anything nice about the other side. No doubt. And you talk about those sanctions that are awaiting Ole Miss, whether they add to them or not. A cloud has been hanging over this program for the last couple of years, and it's affected recruiting. It's obviously affected the players on the team. They're not as deep as they once were. So it'll be real interesting what the NCAA rules when they do finally come to a conclusion. Third and five. That one incomplete. It's fourth down. There is Leo Lewis. It is Lewis and one other player who have. I mean, it's just almost. It's hard to remember precedent with a, an NCAA investigation where one school's players are essentially testifying against the rival school. Yeah, I don't like that. I know that immunity and all that stuff. I don't like it. I feel like it's a conflict of interest. And the NCAA needs to evaluate how they handle these situations moving forward. I'm with you. I mean, you know, it's one thing to try to say, okay, we want everybody to play by the rules. We're trying to get to the bottom of something, but there's something about it that just doesn't feel right. Fourth and five. Thompson pressured and incomplete. That pressure got to him. The Ole Miss defense is playing their best game by far. And even without Fitzgerald on the field. That's been a big factor. That's not the only factor. Yeah, just so, so difficult to replace your quarterback, especially when your quarterback's been as effective as Nick Fitzgerald right there, trying to get a screen going to the left hand side, trying to slow this pass rush, anything to slow this pass rush. And the Rebels get home yet again, playing so well tonight, so inspired on that side of the football. 
group that has struggled for a majority of the season putting their best foot forward here at the end. Thanksgiving night coming to an early end for some of these Bulldog fans who have seen enough to Amu acting like he's going to run then throws it downfield. That one was it caught in bounds. Apparently it was. That's a catch. Demarcus Lodge. Wow. Does Lodge get this left foot down in bounds. Oh man. Close. Of course every play is reviewed and that's what's going to happen here. Heck of an effort either way. What do you think? The ruling on the field for the previous play is a complete catch at the sideline. This play is now under video review. Now remember, it has to be indisputable video evidence to overturn beyond all doubt. That angle looks like the foot is on top of the white. Therefore, he would be out of bounds and the ball would be incomplete. But it's so close that so there's definitely close. some gray area. There is definitely gray area. You can see from this angle. Yeah, that one with the guy's head is sort of in the way. It's really difficult to tell from that angle. Here's a good angle at it. It looks oh. like that toe is just a little bit in the white. But man, it's tough. I mean, of course, it has to be indisputable. I wouldn't be shocked if they held this, if they said it stands. But I, to me, it it looks like he's out of bounds. But what a heck of an effort by Lodge to try to get down with a toe in. But it's going to be the final play of the third quarter. It just depends on whether it's a 29-yard gain or an incompletion. I think you're right. I think there's a little bit touching the line. Of course, that's where we are with replay. You can like it, you can not like it, but in not just college football, in all the sports, we spend a lot of time now going frame by frame, looking as closely as we can on plays like this. After video review, the receiver was able to control the ball but not get a foot in down and bounds. This is an incomplete pass. It'll be second down at the 45 yard line. So second down replay overturns the call as quarter number three comes to an end. Now they're marching back to where the ball would be. Then they'll flip the field and go to the other side. It's been almost all Ole Miss on a heartbreaking night for Mississippi State. The Rebels are having fun in the Egg Bowl. They lead through three, 24 to six. Okay, so it wasn't the end of the third quarter. Five seconds still on the clock. And they will have one final play, presumably. A handoff. Wilkins gets tackled. And now, officially, the third quarter comes to an end. What did we say just a minute ago? Ole Miss enjoying this egg bowl. Yes, they are. 24 6 Rebels. to keep the trophy will miss having its way Nick Fitzgerald early in this egg bowl with a gruesome ankle injury no details other than that he is on the sideline it has been a painful night for Mississippi State Ole Miss at the end of a painful year playing their best game a sack on the first play of the fourth quarter and who knows maybe this one's not quite over yet took a shot it was totally unintentional but I think it was Leo Lewis trying to get up off the pile drilled the part of this crew Leo Lewis is 
not Mr. Popular in Oxford. Yeah, and you can see he kind of gets pushed, and the official goes tumbling. Center judge. Got to give these officials credit. This game with the chippiness could have gotten out of hand, but they've done a good job of keeping it in check and making sure the players respect the opposition after the whistle. I'm with you. Feels like Ole Miss now, the one thing that could derail them, some sort of special teams disaster. Got to be careful here. They get the punt off. Fair catch at the 26-yard line. Friday, that's tomorrow, number two, undefeated Miami, noon Eastern on ABC. Get an early start the day after Thanksgiving. And Miami's got to win that one to keep their realistic playoff hopes alive. On ABC, Pitt has not had a great year, but they can play spoiler against the Hurricanes. Yeah, and Pitt, they've done it before. Remember 10 years ago, playing against West Virginia in 2007. West Virginia wins and they're in the BCS championship game. Pitt beats West Virginia and Pat White and Rich Rodriguez upending their dreams and sending LSU to the BCS championship. Good memory. Thompson on first down. The red, the uh, true freshman to Thomas who just discards the defender. Thomas still going, still going. Who can tackle him? It took about eight. To get the 280 pound wide receiver finally to the ground. That was a tough 25 yards. Yeah, he earned those yards. Getting Thomas back in the game. 280 pounds. Look how nimble he is. At 280, of course, he put the ball in the deck earlier, fumbling it after what would have been a pretty big play. They got to have him step up if they want to have any shot at getting back into this one. He's got a lot of talent for a guy his size. His final game with the Bulldogs. Thompson again looking to throw. That one incomplete, knocked away. Here comes the flag. A.J. Moore came over the top. Pass interference, number 30, defense. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Well, there's still a long way to go in this game. Long way to go. And it's a rivalry, so crazy things happen. You can see. I mean, I look at, at Moore right there, and I feel like he's getting there in a decent spot. I mean, I think it was kind of bang, bang. Ball was behind it. I don't know if I would have called that one. Play fake again. Thompson now will take off. Thompson. Positive yardage on first down inside the 30. Obviously, 18 point game. You don't have to operate at hyper speed just yet. You have to be very mindful of the play clock. Have a little tempo about yourself offensively. Second and three. Thompson again looking to throw toward the end zone. Incomplete. Trying to hit Reggie Todd. Third down. They had one on one and Todd climbing. Just a little over the top and he knew he had him. It's one that you got to make, especially down when time is of the essence. But four down territory nonetheless for Mississippi State here. So even if they're short on third and three, Expect Dan Mullen and company to have a fourth and short play ready. Ole Miss showing some pressure from that left side. They do bring some pressure. Thompson throws across the middle, incomplete. Well, now we'll test your theory. It's got to be four down territory. That was the 30th play that Mississippi State has run on this side of the field in Ole Miss territory. They have six points. That's a lot of plays to run in your opponent's territory and the turnovers are a part of that. Leslie McGriff's defense has played well. Fourth and three. Ole Miss showing pressure and nobody back deep for the Rebels. Nobody. This is their last line of defense. Play clock is right winding there. down. Can they get it snapped? No, they call a timeout. That took too long, the adjustment from the sideline.
So a chance for the defense to get organized. Same thing for Dan Mullen's offense. Our college football look ahead brought to you by Xfinity X1. That Pitt Miami game we've been talking about Notre Dame, Stanford, Clemson, South Carolina, West Virginia without their starting quarterback, Will Greer, at Oklahoma. And you'll be in Atlanta, right? I will. I am looking forward to that. Greatest that's rivalry name in sports. Clean, old fashioned hate between <laughs> Georgia Tech and the dogs from Athens. That's literally what they call the rivalry. It's a great rivalry name, it's not clean, old fashioned hate. It kind of <laughs> gets to the point. It does. The hate in this rivalry lately hadn't been all that clean. And it hadn't been all that old fashioned either. Fourth and three. Thompson, option style play, pitches it. Williams really just has nowhere to go. That play was well defended again by Ole Miss. Taylor Polk, Breland speaks, two guys who have played really well for the Rebels, and others were in on that play. Ole Miss takes over on downs. A beleaguered defensive coordinator this year for Ole Miss. He has earned that smile tonight, that's for sure. 24 6, Ole Miss with the lead. Tonight, it appears as if the Rebels are taking it back to Oxford. Still got 12:37 to go. Well, what a game for Ole Miss. The starter, for Mississippi State, knocked out, but 24-6 Rebels with the lead. They're playing without their starting quarterback. Now Jordan Damu has had a lot of experience this year. The injury to Shea Patterson happened a while ago, but I think it's worth mentioning that. Ole Miss is on their backup quarterback and they've found ways to get the offense revved up. It just goes to show you what a difference age makes. I know that Tom who's a, he's definitely starting for the first time over the last four games at this level. But he's a junior. Having played in junior college prepares you better for moments like this whereas Keaton Thompson is a true freshman has had a difficult time handling the circumstances. And basically he was playing high school football in New Orleans the last time he was taking significant snaps. Tamu whips it down the field of just a horrible throw right into coverage and intercepted by McLaurin. Well, maybe one last gasp for the Bulldogs. He looked like a true freshman throwing that one. Yeah. Just as we praise his poise. He makes by far the biggest mistake of the game by throwing it just right to McLaurin. I don't know what he saw. It's Gerald certainly not giving up. Trying to cheer his team on from the sideline. Well, Tom, who knows, that one can't happen in that circumstance. Still 12 minutes to go. Breland speaks just having a monster egg bowl number nine. Mississippi State Thompson keeps it. This is the fourth time in this game they have started a drive in Ole Miss territory started a drive and they have six points total. They have turned it over five times but all those plays on this side of the field and almost nothing to show for it. They're outgaining Ole Miss overall. That is misleading. You look at Mississippi State in general, though. I mean, they've had 22 more plays of offense than Ole Miss. Ole Miss has made the big plays, though. Obviously, turnovers by their defense, and then huge plays in the passing game. Big plays and turnovers, by far the biggest component to winning and losing college football games. And Ole Miss is two for two in that regard. They're down at two. Don Thompson gives the ball to Hill. So tough running from another true freshman. True freshman to true freshman, Kylan Hill. He's going to be a good one. I'm really looking forward to seeing this young man develop. He's so sudden, quick. I think he's got a chance to be the best back that Dan Mullins had here at Starkville. They've had some good ones. We'll get it again. 
Not a great snap and exchange inside the 30. Surprised to see them playing so slow right here. I mean, it's an 18-point game. It's certainly with a score here. You're back in it potentially, or at least you have a chance at it. But methodical drive here right now with very little tempo by the Bulldogs. Yeah, I mean, you need three scores, even if you're going for two, you got to get three scores. That one caught by Thomas. That'll be a first down to the 20. And you see the lineman just walking up to the line of scrimmage, too. I mean, not really a whole lot of urgency. Almost under 10. Three score game. Got to understand the situation in the bigger picture. Going a little quicker here, maybe. Pressure comes over the top. Incomplete. Thomas looking for the flag. No penalty. Hartsfield with the coverage. There was some contact downfield. You can see Hartsfield. Yeah, his left arm's on the back of the jersey of Thomas, but that ball was thrown three, four yards out of bounds and well over the head of the six foot five target. The officials probably thought that, that was uncatchable. DeMarcus Gates leading tackler on the sideline. Thompson tackled by his neck almost at the 15. 12 more tackles for Gates. He's going to be the first Ole Miss player with 100 plus tackles in a single year since Patrick Willis more than a decade ago, one of the all time greats. Gates playing his final game in this Egg Bowl. Play fake, Thompson, wide open, caught, touchdown, Dedrick Thomas. Not over yet. Ole Miss finally makes a mistake defensively, leaves Thomas completely uncovered. And Thompson isn't going to miss that one. Big play for the Bulldogs. It took him eight plays to go those 44 yards. Not quite three minutes. Still 9-16 on the clock. Still needing two more scores. But now down 24-13. fellows and get the golden egg and we do appreciate the participation Neil Price voice of the Bulldogs David Kellum voice of the Rebels kind of a dramatic reading from a student newspaper account 90 years ago the origins of the golden egg trophy this egg bowl the 114th edition of the egg bowl thanks to Neil and David for playing along onside kick coming and it is recovered by Mississippi State. And I think it did just barely travel far enough. That looked to me like it was perfect execution. Cameron Dantzler, the defensive back, came up with it. I have to watch it again and see for sure. Does the ball travel 10 yards? And close. Very close. Now from that angle, it looks a little less certain. Rolling on the field is that the kick was possessed by the kicking team prior to the ball going 10 yards. Therefore, that's a spot of illegal touching. Wow. The ball will be placed there, first down. So they have ruled it was an illegal touch and not a legal recovery. I think it's a good call, too. I think so, too. It looks like he's just short. Really good kick. And well executed. Surprised that Ole Miss was caught off guard. How do you how do you get caught Correction. off guard by that? Correction. First down this way. I just don't understand how you're not at least thinking and, and getting your hands team out on the field. And if they kick it deep, so be it. But you have to have your hands team on the field and at least prepared for an onside kick. I don't understand what the Rebel coaching staff was doing right there. Almost extremely well executed. Hey, yeah, the Mississippi State fans now are watching a replay thinking that they got an incorrect call against them. 
those camera angles, it, it is tough on any kind of play like that to get the true look, but I think they got the call right. We had a pretty good look at it. Tamu threw the pick last time, is going to run this time. And the Ole Miss offense now is not executing with the 24 13 lead, nine minutes to go. Trying to get the ground game going. This Ole Miss team, they're not great when it comes to melting the clock. Remember the big lead given up against Arkansas just a few weeks ago. They're not great running the football in a four minute offense situation to try to ice the game. Probably gonna just run their offense and drop back and throw it. The fumble on the exchange in that Arkansas game. There goes Wilkins. And that should just about do it. Straight up the middle. Doesn't get any more simple than that. He's over 100 yards. He's over 1,000 for the year. And Ole Miss is up to 30 against their rivals. Right when we tell you that Ole Miss has had trouble putting opponents away, they put the nail in the coffin with just a simple, standard inside zone. And Wilkins takes it the distance. Huge exclamation point for what's been an outstanding night for the Rebels. Extra point is good. Just when you thought maybe there was a chance, a disputed onside kick recovery, have a botched play on first down, second down, handoff to number 22. And Jordan Wilkins did the rest. All the way. Back here on Thanksgiving night in Starkville. been a night for the Rebels and I don't know if many people thought that would be the case. The kid from Starkville coming back home and he has been talking some game on the sidelines. AJ Brown having a huge night in his hometown for the rival school. Mississippi State will get it back Todd out to the 30 yard line. Our college football awards spotlight brought to you by the Home Depot. Another guy who has done a little talking and gesturing over the last few weeks and few years. Baker Mayfield on the field. The performance has been spectacular. Off the charts. And I got a chance to see him in person last week. Second time I've been able to see him in person. We had the Houston and, and Oklahoma game to kick it off last season. And he is just so much better even than he was last year. And he finished third in the Heisman in 2016 it is certainly his award I think you can just about start etching his name on the most coveted individual award in sport and that Home Depot College Football Awards show by the way December 7th right here on ESPN incomplete pass for the Bulldogs I think you're probably right I think he is just so sensational what he does moving around in the pocket, creating on his own, being accurate. When you ask him to maneuver within the pocket, he's just, he's got everything you could possibly want as a quarterback. And Bryce Love's been great, Barkley's been great, Lamar Jackson's been great. Lots of great individual performers in college football this year, but it is, it's hard to argue with what Baker Mayfield's done. Thompson pitches it forward there. A shovel type pass. Tackled short of the first down. Let's go down to Laura. Dave, obviously this Ole Miss team with the self-imposed bowl ban not able to compete in a bowl game this year, but they tried to make this week feel like a bowl game. They went bowling. They also uh, did a community service event at a local hospital. They actually installed arcades, uh, arcade games in their locker room. And basically Matt Luke said he just wanted to make sure that it was all about feeling special this week and rewarding them for a hard fought season that obviously didn't go exactly how they would have wanted it to. You know what good for them? You know, Matt Luke being a former player, understanding how difficult the circumstances are for the young men that are in the program, not being able to participate in the postseason, making it really special in their final game. Thompson will get sacked. Breland speaks again.
could be his final game. We don't know for sure. He's a fourth year junior. He's played like an NFL prospect tonight. I think it's safe to assume it's his final game. I mean, he has been absolutely unblockable. Working against Rankin right there, too. One of the better left tackles that you'll see in the SEC, and he just swims right inside and brings down Thompson. He's been unblockable for the majority of the night. Did from Jackson, Mississippi. More pressure forces an incompletion. There is a penalty flag on the field in the backfield. Holding against the Bulldogs. Holding. 55 offense. Penalties decline. Third down. Matt Luke decides to decline the penalty. He hopes that he'll have a lot more decisions to make. An Ole Miss guy through and through says it's his dream job to be the head coach. He is going to officially interview. He's had a season long interview to try to make his case to be the, the full time head coach. What do you think? And it hasn't been without bumps. It has not. Across the middle on third and very long. Good effort by Couch to get close. I assume they'll go for it. On fourth and a yard and a half. But I think if you look at the whole body of work for Matt Luke this season and understanding the circumstances surrounding the program, he's done a good job, especially tonight, getting these guys ready to play. Now, are the decisions throughout the week, have they been flawless? Not necessarily. Have they been flawless tonight? Calling timeout at the end of the half, not having your team aligned for an onside kick potentially. There are some things that he still needs to iron out for sure as a coach when it comes to situational football. But I think he deserves a heck of a look, especially knowing that he knows everything about this program, what to do, how to handle it, and how to lead these young men. Thompson on first down after converting on fourth. Gets nine yards on that scramble. Well, it, it would be impossible. I'm sure Matt Luke himself has thought about it. It's impossible not to Kind of go back and think if, if you just hold that lead against Arkansas, you're six and five going for your seventh win. They played Texas AM and in some ways outplayed the Aggies last week. I had a great chance to win that game. If they were finishing up an eight and four year or something like that with everything that's going on around this program, that would be a pretty compelling case. But some of those types of things that you're talking about, some clock mismanagement moments, some lack of execution, a get blown out by Alabama where you just get wiped up by a very good team but that was not a good look presumably some of the things that are probably working against Matt Luke Thompson into coverage incomplete trying to hit Thomas let's not lose sight though of of the fact that Ole Miss over the last five years they have made a commitment to football Ross Bjork, the athletic director, has done a tremendous job increasing the budget. They were paying Hugh Freeze $5 million a year, so they're capable of bringing a top-tier coach to Oxford. So it's going to be a very difficult decision, I think, for Ross Bjork when determining his next head coach. There goes Hill! Touchdown! Be careful here. The officials trying. I think there was in the middle of all that at least one flag thrown. Started with that hit on Hill in the end zone. He did some talking. Thirty-yard touchdown run. You see some of that burst. That Hill has some chippiness After there. The play was over. Unfortunate like conduct. Number nine of the defense, the 15 yard penalty will be enforced on the succeeding kickoff. The result of the play is touchdown. This is number nine's first unfortunate like conduct foul of the game. The only thing that's gone wrong for Breland Speaks, that penalty against him. They are, looks like, going to go for two here with under five minutes to go. That would make it a, if they could convert, a 10 point game. Presumably they try another onside kick. Mm -hmm. 
Thompson under center. Uh, that did not look right, but it helps when you're that athletic. They got the two points anyway. Ten point game. Mississippi State saying we will not go quietly into the night. Little 321 loop pass right. Keaton Thompson keeps it himself to keep the 14th egg bowl from Starkville. 31 21 Ole Miss. For the touchdown by Kylan Hill. Mississippi State will set up for an onside kick try again. They came real close last time. This time the hands team apparently is out there. This one hanging up in the air and that was a smart play. Knocked out of bounds by DK Metcalf. Who doesn't do anything without a little style at the end of it even just bat a ball out of bounds. Let's go down Laura Rutledge. Well Dave you've talked about it. It's nothing new that Dan Mullen's name is out there for potentially going other places other jobs available certainly right now and we asked him about it before the game and he said look you know he's addressed it with his team but right now it's nothing that he's dealt with. He did confirm that he has not spoken with any other school or any other school's representative as of right now and he said he loves it here at Mississippi State and tonight his focus was and I'm sure still is on winning this game. That's where his heart is and, and he really values certainly these players and understands how much it means to them as well to be here. On a member of the receiving team batting the ball forward towards his opponent's goal line. This 10 yard penalty will be enforced in the succeeding spot and will have another free kick. Well so I called it a smart play and it was if you don't bat it forward. Yeah. You got to make sure you don't bat it forward. The celebration afterwards looks a little silly now. I, I, it's the right idea. You just can't do it exactly the way he did. And Mississippi State gets another try here. Yeah, heads up play to knock it out of bounds. You just can't knock it forward. Take another look at DK Metcalf as he goes vertical. You can see that ball is clearly traveling more to the left than it is straight line or to the right. Therefore, it's a good call by the officials and. Mississippi State has another opportunity here potentially. Different style onside kick, and that one had too much spin on it. <laughs> a little too much backspin. Not good. That does not give yourself a chance. Surprised they try to do that because Cook has executed two pretty good onside kicks to his right. That time, the third time, they tried to kick it right up the middle, and it wasn't good. Now, the first two weren't successful, but at least they hopped right and bounced up at the right time and traveled the 10 yards. That one just poorly executed by kick as he tried to attempt the onside. Offside, kicking team. The five yard penalty would be enforced from the end of the kick, first down. The Ole Miss gets the ball with 4.57 to play, up 10. I did want to go back to what Laura was talking about because Dan Mullen could have a very tough decision to make coming up soon like tomorrow or the next day soon. He has made this a really good job. It will not be easy for him and they are teed up Greg, to have another good year next year. If he were to leave he'd be leaving a very good situation here in Starkville. Yeah next year's team is going to be outstanding almost everybody's back. Now granted Nick Fitzgerald's health is important. He went down earlier tonight. Assume he's going to be back at full strength. And off. Gain of a couple yards. Mississippi State does have the two timeouts. And I have no doubt what Morris said is right. I mean his focus was on this game. I, this is a guy who has been around a long time. There have been all rumors about him for years and years. He's used to hearing about that and handling that. Players are used to that. He said the leadership council comes to my office and we laugh about it. And if he's getting, if these rumors are out there circulating and he's getting some interest, that's because he's doing a heck of a job at the place he's currently at. So it's really, it's, it's, a, it's a sign of respect for the job he's done. And off again. This 
time a better gain for Ole Miss. Stopped a couple of yards short. Similar play that they just scored on. Had some pullers coming from the left hand side working to the right. Even though that one wasn't a long touchdown run, it was still pretty effective to give Ole Miss a third and very manageable where they could run it or throw it if they so choose. It's Leo Lewis on the field hurting. Not the most significant injury of the night for Mississippi State. No offense to Leo Lewis. That the injury to their quarterback. It happened in the first quarter. It was ugly. He was on the field a long time. The Ole Miss players with all the, the animosity between these two programs showed good sportsmanship. He showed incredible toughness. He's a tremendous young man and we'll all be thinking of him as he hopes to make a very speedy recovery. I think everybody believes he will. It is interesting to even think that that could play any part in a decision for his head coach. It's a legitimate question. I don't think it would. I would assume that if Dan Mullen gets an opportunity elsewhere and decides to leave, he's got to do so thinking forward, not thinking backward. But I think he's got a heck of a team coming back next year. So if he does in fact leave it better be for a really really good job. Matt Luke calls the timeout. 315 to go in this one. Dan Mullen as a head coach came to this program and th this program was in disarray. He is one win away from 72nd most in school history. They had never been number one. Five weeks as the number one team a few seasons ago with Dak Prescott seven bowl appearances this year will make it eight. They had had almost no recent bowl history before Dan Mullen showed up all kinds of NFL talent. He has cultivated that national coach of the year in 2014. Now, I, I agree with the sentiment you hear it on Feinbaum you hear it all over the place where he he is the second best coach right now in the SEC. I agree with that. Yeah I do too. Uh, I think if you see the way he's evaluated and developed talent it would leave you with no question of course Nick Saban occupies the top spot but Dan Mullen has done a heck of a job here at Starkville. Third down handoff and with a block that'll be a first down and a smart play to get down now there is a flag thrown which could negate that first down. <clears throat> Holding 43 off the 10 yard penalty third down. It does negate it. Quick called for the holding. And a good call, too. Quick was working from the right hand side to the left, and he grabbed a hold of a Bulldogs jersey. Potentially a huge penalty for Ole Miss. Now, obviously, a lot tougher to try to convert and put this thing away. Well, another timeout, and this one, Mississippi State calls the timeout just to stop the clock. Well, they've got one remaining. Chances are not great with 3.09 to go down 10, but still a shot in this 114th egg bowl rivalry. It's fun to be a part of. Yeah. The game obviously changed totally. The feel of it, the intensity in the stadium when Nick Fitzgerald went down, and uh, for Mississippi State fans, uh, a year where just about everything has been positive. It's such a good year, a real downer here tonight in Starkville. Yeah, disappointing too, because Nick Fitzgerald, you clearly see based on the offensive output, just how much he means to this team, just how valuable he is running it and throwing it and being a leader as well. I mean, his presence was missed on the sideline. I think the defense was maybe affected by the fact that he wasn't out there as well. He just does so many things for you. Just heartbreaking to see his season end tonight more than likely on the field. Third and nine handoff. That'll be stopped. So Ole Miss is going to have to punt the ball away. And they will use a timeout. I like this from Dan Mullen. I, I sometimes Dan does get criticized for clock management issues at the end of the game sort of game planning at the end of the game. Every coach 
in a big time program gets criticized for that stuff at times but it doesn't matter when you you, you got to save the time period so when you use them offense defense whatever as long as you save the full 40 seconds you've done your job they have no timeouts left but still 304 to go down 10 and they had to burn one a little earlier in the half when they had their offense on the field and the play clock winding down well, they'd love to have that one back right now timeouts in the second half are like gold so valuable but with the way they've blocked kicks and the success they've had in special teams you got to think that they're going to come after this one as hard as humanly possible to see if they can get a hand on it one well, of the best in college football getting to the punter got one tonight more than eight they don't get to this one and didn't really try much that time fair catch inside the 25 now wait a minute here come more penalty flags that Breland speaks he's already been called for one unsportsmanlike penalty I think it's against him. I think he's going to be out of the game. After the play was over, personal foul. Number nine, kicking team. 15 yard penalty from the end of the kick. This is number nine, second unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game. He is therefore disqualified. Wow. We on a night for Breland Speaks that has been so special. Why? To hit a player for Mississippi State right in the face. I mean, Breland Speaks has been sensational tonight, all over the field. The best player on the field, potentially, outside of maybe A.J. Brown, who's on the offensive side for the Rebels. I mean, he's had an incredible, incredible night, and yet he shows immaturity. There at the end of the game. NFL scouts will evaluate that bad decision by the junior. And off, running the ball, Harris Williams. Mississippi State's got to be very quick here, down two scores, under three with no timeouts. But they already know they got to score and get an onside kick to have a chance. Thompson. Throws that one with a couple blockers and out of bounds after the first down game. Dedrick Thomas. Penalty also helped with field position. Gates has been banged up for a lot of this second half. Well, you could argue their two best defensive players now are not on the field. Low snap. Thompson got hit. It's incomplete. 2.22 on the clock, second and 10. Pretty impressed with the way Keaton Thompson's hung in there tonight. That jersey is dirty. He's taken a lot of hits, both running it and when he's dropped back. Some of the snaps have been inaccurate, too. And then he's battled. For a guy that hasn't really been on this stage before, he's really played hard. Second down, that throw again with some blockers set up along the sideline, out of bounds to stop the clock. Jesse Jackson with the catch and run. Thompson's up to 162 yards passing, got 119 rushing yards to support the point that you're making. He'll get the full bowl season to take the reps as the first string quarterback. In the pocket, across the middle, it's caught. Inside the five. And Ole Miss fans everywhere are thinking this can't happen, can it? What a great throw by Thompson. Here we are singing his praises, saying how well he's hung in there. Tell you what, that's a throw that Dak Prescott would be jealous of. First and goal. He'll keep it. Thompson trying to rush his way forward. Okay, you don't get it. You got to go. You already know you're going to have to get the onside kick. And uh, just as I was saying, I mean, Ole Miss fans are thinking, we've seen this before. That Arkansas collapse was hard to watch. Hand off Williams. Extra effort. He's stretched out. They say he's down. They call him down. That was close. That keeps the clock moving. 
That might be the kind of play you would look at, but Mississippi State's got to go so fast they're going to get to the line and try to push it in. And did they? I thought they did. Clock's still running here. Nobody's made a signal. Finally, touchdown. Not over yet in the Egg Bowl. See the surge as a quarterback. That is genuinely my least favorite play in college football. <laughs> <laughs> the, the QB sneak on the six inch line. You know you're going to get hit. You know you're going to get pounded as you try to approach that pay dirt. But he nudged forward and kept the momentum going for a very, very interesting touchdown here late. So they've already gotten a two point try. That means they can just kick the extra point here. Again, it's going to come down to an onside kick. They're going to have to have it with no timeouts remaining. But they have got a chance in this game. 31 27. Kick is good. Go back to the throw by Keaton Thompson down the middle. It gave them the opportunity to close the gap. That is so well thrown right over the head of Polk and right underneath the oncoming safety. That's a tight window, and that's not a throw that he probably would have pulled off in the first half. But as the game's gone on, the confidence level has slowly but surely started to rise. And now he's starting to deliver on some of that promise. You think some of those folks can make a U-turn? <laughs> there are a lot of cars headed out of here. Uh, hey, never mind. Never over till it's over. I mean, you would never want to say, I missed the kick six. I missed the play, Stanford Cal. If you left this and something weird happens here, you might never forgive yourself. They got the hands team out on the field. Mississippi State has to have this one. They've had some practice. This one, another one of those straight ahead, right to the up man, recovered by Ole Miss. And that should do it. I'm with you. I don't know why they tried that style twice in a row. The more traditional onside kick style was close to working two different times. I'm with you. Twice in a row. I guess they like their numbers. They say there's three guys for us inside the hash. They have one. Unfortunately for the Bulldogs, that one was up to the task. Matt Luke elated. What did uh, Laura tell us his final words for his team in the locker room were before this Egg Bowl? Make this a night you'll never forget. Something like that. Right. He will never forget this night. An Ole Miss player. Peter grew up in an Ole Miss household. And now the Ole Miss head coach is going to win the 114th Egg Bowl. And we do have to hang on here at the end and just hope that there's good sportsmanship at the end of this one. The athletic director and the head coach celebrating a win that will end this year for the Rebels. Cold night for that. Oh boy. He thought it was over. And it wasn't over. I'm not sure you can ever get used to the Gatorade bath. That's for sure. Got to snap it one more time. They do. That's some pushing. Right. Handshakes, maybe we could just get everybody off the field. Ole Miss is going to run to that trophy as the final seconds tick off the clock. And look who's got it. The kid who grew up right here in Starkville. Had a huge game for the Bulldogs' rivals. We'll see what happens with both of those head coaches, both of these programs, in the days and weeks to come. 
But that with everything that's gone on with this rivalry over the last 18 months two years plus that is a satisfying win for Ole Miss. A heartbreaker of a night for Mississippi State. They will finish the regular year eight and four and wait to see what happens in their bowl game assignment. Mullen talking to the kicker like he's still doing some coaching about those last couple onside kicks. So far, so good in terms of keeping everybody calm. Let's go down with Matt Luke, Laura Rutledge. Thanks, Dave. Coach, you grew up an Ole Miss fan, and now you've just won the Egg Bowl with your team. How would you describe the way that this team, in knowing they can't play a bowl game this year, won this one? Well, I, I'm just so happy. <laughs> Where you coach? Thank you. I love you too, man. Where you coach? Hey, I'm just so happy for these guys. Hey, I'm happy for these seniors. Happy for these seniors. They went three and one against me.